Um, Hi, this is Tyler Oberman from Memphis, Tennessee, and I have a quick question for those of you who would call yourselves Christian conservatives. The death penalty. What would Jesus do? Governor you know, one of the toughest <laughs> challenges that I ever faced as a governor was carrying out the death penalty. I did it more than any other governor ever had to do it in my state. As I look on this stage, I'm pretty sure that I'm the only person on this stage that's ever had to actually do it. Let me tell you, it was the toughest decision I ever made as a human being. I read every page of every document of every case that ever came before me because it was the one decision that came to my desk that once I made it, it was irrevocable. Every other decision somebody else could go back and overturn, could fix if it was a mistake, that was one. It was irrevocable. I believe there is a place for a death penalty. Some crimes are so heinous, so horrible, that the only response that we as a civilized nation have for a most uncivil action is not only to try to deter that person from ever committing that crime again, but also as a warning to others that some crimes truly are beyond any other capacity for us to fix. Now, having said that, there are those who say, how can you be pro-life and believe in a death penalty? Because there's a real difference between the process of adjudication where a person is deemed guilty after a thorough judicial process and is put to death by all of us as citizens under a law, as opposed to an individual making a decision to terminate a life that has never been deemed guilty because the life never was given a chance to even exist. Sure. That's the fundamental difference. I, I do have to, though, press though, the question, which the, the question was from the viewer was, what would Jesus do? Would Jesus support the death penalty? Jesus was too smart to ever run for public office, Anderson. That's what Jesus would do. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this wonderful celebration. And we're so very glad that all of you could join us here tonight as we get underway to hear the president, oh my gosh, excuse me, hello, I'm sorry, I'm right in the middle of an event, it's who, it's God, <laughs> on the phone for me, how, how did he get my number, oh God has everybody's number, okay, yes I'll hold, yes God, Yes, sir, I'm right in the middle of a, the president's coming. Yes, sir, he sure is. Oh, yes, sir, he's here too. He is. Uh, and you, uh, you, uh, you say you, you want, you, you need an autograph. Oh, for, for Samson, I, I understand. Yes, Lord. And, and you, know, you know, God, this is a pretty big event. We've got a lot of people in, and I've only got a very short time here. Oh, you've got all the time in the world, I understand. <laughs> yes, Lord. And you want me to deliver a message, and that would be, yes, sir. Well, we want to, yes, sir, we want to do what's right, and our president does, and we're behind him. Yes, sir, we sure are. And we, yes, sir, we know you don't take sides in the election, but... <laughs> But if you did, we, we kind of think you'd hang in there with us, Lord. We really do. So, and, yes, sir. We'll pass those good words on. I see you talk to the president, and he talks to you anyway. So that's, and we know that. And we know that, yes, sir. Take care of the, the family and marriage and the people of America and all the people, and the children, and yes, sir, I can tell you every one of us are committed to doing that, and a whole army of people out here, and we pledge we'll do our very best to do that, sir. Yes, sir. Well, thank you for blessing me, and we'll bless you, too. <laughs> thank you, and thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome this evening's chairman, Mitt Romney. But the reality is, and I'm worried because, frankly, within the... That was Barack Obama. He just tripped off a chair. He's getting ready to speak, and somebody aimed a gun at him, and he 
He dove for the floor. And he would take the Israelis and basically march them to the door of the oven. Do you stand by your comments? What Absolutely, you to the I president? do. Absolutely, I do. Three times I've been to Auschwitz. When I talked about the oven door, I have stood at that oven door. I know exactly what it looks like. The IRS is the closest thing the U.S. has to a Gestapo. When I talked about the oven door, I have stood at that oven door. I know exactly what it looks like. The IRS is the closest thing the U.S. has to a Gestapo. And, and something came up about guns, and, and they were saying about how nobody should ever own an AR-15. Well, there's just no reason to own an assault weapon. And I said, every weapon is an assault weapon. And I said, every weapon is an assault weapon. We shouldn't have muskets to serve in our country. We should have the military in us. Well, we should have whatever we choose to have, because it's a citizen's right. The government shouldn't tell me what the limitations of my self-protection are. If somebody's going to break in my house, I want at least to be as well armed as they are, if not better armed than they are. Right. My plan is always to have a, a better arsenal to defend myself than they are going to have to try to attack me. President Obama used the South Carolina church shooting to score some political points. He wants to go after the guns. Uh, pretty despicable behavior, uh, what he said and what he did. I want to get your reaction to that. Well, it was disappointing to hear the president uh, within virtually minutes of, uh, I guess, the news breaking, or certainly hours of it breaking, for him to come to the podium and immediately begin to say, all right, this is a great opportunity for me to grandstand and uh, jump up on the stump and let's talk about gun control. All of the proposals that this president and others have put forward on gun control would not have stopped this shooting any more than it would have stopped Sandy Hook. Uh, the one thing that would have at least ameliorated the horrible situation in Charleston would have been that if somebody in that prayer meeting had a concealed carry or there had been a either an off-duty policeman or an on-duty policeman somebody with the legal authority to carry a firearm and could have stopped the shooter maybe not everyone would have been saved but they probably would have gotten to the shooter before the shooter killed nine people and wounded several others we're trying to make sense of the horrific shooting at sandy hook elementary school but we're not going to make sense not from that which is totally disconnected from the cognitive capacity of any rational human being. Well, the predictable left lit up the airwaves and blogosphere with a vile and vicious reaction and jumped to the conclusion that I said that if we had prayer in school, the shooting wouldn't have happened. Well, I said nothing of the sort. It's far more than just taking prayer or Bible reading out of the schools. It's the fact that people sue a city so we aren't confronted with a manger scene or a Christmas carol. That lawsuits are filed to remove a cross that's a memorial to fallen soldiers. We carefully and intentionally stop saying things are sinful, then we call them disorders. Sometimes we even say they're normal. And to get to where that we have to abandon bedrock moral truths, then we are asked, well, where was God? And I respond that as I see it, we've escorted him right out of our culture and we've marched him off the public square